It is very quietly, or maybe not quietly, because I keep shouting about it, one of the big needs for the Orlando Magic this offseason. As we begin to think about what's coming up for the Orlando Magic, how the Orlando Magic fill the backup center need, why it's important, and where the Magic go coming up on today's Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed locked on magic. Today is June 6th, 2023. My name is Philip Ross. And I'm the expert insight editor over at Orlando Magic Daily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at Philip R underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, we're going to dive fully into the backup center need for the Orlando Magic. Why I think this is the critical need for the Orlando Magic, why I don't think they have enough to fill it on the roster, and who they could target to fill this need. We'll get into all that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload, we truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember this great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for. The Locked On Podcast Network, it's your team every day. Today's podcast is brought to you by the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Do Orlando Magic have a lot of needs? Um, you know, the, yes, last season was a, a huge success, uh, getting to 34 wins and really setting this franchise up for its future and, and what we believe will be a very bright future. And, and there's a lot to be excited about, a lot to be eager about as we begin to look ahead to next season, and, and certainly to the future well beyond it. There, there is a lot to get excited about uh, on this team. But uh, but there are a lot of concerns, too. It, it, it's as much as we see growth and development as leading this team forward into the postseason, perhaps, into that next era, um, it's not a given. We, we can't sit here and pretend that and pretend that it's just going to happen that that's that's the truth we can't just pretend it's going to happen automatically with the roster we have now the magic do need to add to this roster again the draft will be a big part of that we've talked a ton about the draft the draft will be a part of it trades will be a part of it free agency will be a part of it this summer is in my opinion, a summer to shore up the team's depth. Uh, I, I think that is the most vital thing this team does. Shooting is absolutely a core need uh, as far as a skill. And, and, and so much of what we've talked about, you know, perhaps sometimes too much maybe, um, in the draft process is, is talking about shooting. And talking about shooting as this thing that the Magic need to focus on almost to the, the exclusion of everything else. But to me, there is only one need that is so urgent and so important that I think it has to be addressed. And, and I think that this is where the Magic need to spend a good chunk of their salary cap room or a good chunk of their trade capital that they're willing to spend this off season. They get Chumo KK, maybe Bull Bull. Uh, you know, the, if you can get something for that, 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 that might be where you go with it. To me, backup center is still the biggest need. This is not a question of Wendell Carter. Wendell Carter is a very, very good center. Um, you know, I was, I was looking through the list because I, I, I uh, someone pitched this idea that maybe he should be on Team USA. And I was like, I actually really like that idea. I think Carter would add a lot to Team USA. Well, he's not a great, not like a, an over the rim rim protector. And look, that's, you know, I put Wendell Carter question in, in the today's show rundown. Uh, we're going to dive a little bit into that uh, here in a minute, but I, I think there are some questions about Wendell Carter in the big picture in the long term, but he's very solid for what he does. I think he would be great in FIBA. He's like 15, 16, you know, depending on which player ranking system you use, 
he's like fifth, number 15, number 16 among American centers, um, at least statistically, at least by some of these rankings, fairly consistently, you know, t- near the top 15 in terms of bigs, uh, you know, who can play for Team USA. Carter, Carter did play for Team USA at one point uh, in the youth program uh, for the U-17 team, was, was an, part of an all-tournament team. Uh, back in 2015, I believe, or 2016, something like that. Um, Carter Carter's really, really solid. And, and, and while I, I think there are long-term questions, those aren't the questions to answer this year. This coming season, the Orlando Magic are trying to figure out how good they really are. And so, to me, they don't need these massive upheaval changes to their starting lineup they need to see just how far these guys can take them and more importantly, perhaps how they respond to pressure. That to me is the bigger thing. How do these guys respond to pressure? Can Markel Fultz succeed in a playoff series with, with the growth that we expect from him? Can Wendell Carter succeed in a playoff series with the, with the growth that we expect from him? Nothing exposes your flaws like the playoffs. These guys have earned the opportunity to fail in the playoffs and to see like, okay, is this something they can get better at? Or is this something that they're going to struggle with as they move forward? The issue, though, with Wendell Carter, and this is like the biggest issue that that I probably have with him, is at this juncture, you have to plan on him missing games. I've been telling everyone that essentially you've got to bet and you've got to plan your roster for Wendell Carter to miss 15 to 20 games a year. Carter has not played more than 62 games in any season of his career this, so far. He's He played in only 57 games last year. So again, think about that. That's 25 games missed. That's 25 games where Mo Bamba had to start. Mo Wagner had to start. Goga Batadze got a few starts. The Magic, like Wendell Carter, They should have every reason to like him. But if they're serious about making a playoff push, they need to make sure they have a starter quality center, at least someone who can make spot starts for them, and they won't lose that much. And look, the Magic are going to try some funky lineups. They're going to try Paolo Bancaro at the five. They're going to try Jonathan Isaac at the five at times. They, They should try these things. But they need to be able to match up. And they need to be able to to sustain themselves if Carter misses games. Because at the end of the day, the only reason the Magic didn't make the playoffs this year is they started 5-20. and And look, Wendell Carter played those games. but And and the reason why they started 5-20 and was largely because they didn't have any point guards to start the season um, through those first 25 games. But you have to be prepared. You know this is an issue. You know this is a big thing. And, and, and if it sounds like I'm like raising alarms, I'm not going cr- so crazy. I'm not sitting here saying, you know, trade Wendell Carter. He's unreliable. He's very reliable. You know, the durability is a question though. Uh, you know, you know, we, everyone's ready to go to be done with Jonathan Isaac because he's played 11 games in three years. Wendell Carter, not to that extreme, obviously, the Wendell Carter has this, this repeated thing throughout his career where he's just going to miss time. Now, this is not a question of Wendell Carter's toughness either. The dude played on a plantar fascia sprain for most of the season. If it felt like Carter lacked some explosion or wasn't as good as he could be, and he had a great season, by the way, it's because he was literally playing on a bad foot. Um, I... I Pitched my idea about Carter being on Team USA uh, and, and posted it. It's on OrlandoMagicDaily.com. I, I don't feel like I need to talk a ton more about that. About that, it was just kind of a crazy idea. I was just like, well, why not? Why not put him on on TV on Team USA for the World Cup? At least put him in the system. Put you know, get him on the select team. Get him to the tryout. I, I think he should be in the roster pool. Um, Jaron Jackson Jr. right now is the only center that's been reported to be on the roster. Jaron Jackson Jr. 100 should be on the roster. 100 should be starting. He's going to foul out a lot in Europe, by the way, and, and FIBA play, by the way. Um, Wendell Carter is just a solid guy who I think does a lot of the things that you need in a FIBA game. He's going to be tough. He's a good defender on Nikola Jokic, but that's neither here nor there. Carter is a solid player. He's a tough player. He's a tough dude. But at this point, 
We have enough data to tell us 82 games is a lot for him. And so the Magic, if they are serious about competing, if they are serious about making a playoff push, they need to prepare themselves for it. They need to put themselves in a position to make this run. And that's why I think backup center is such a critical need. When we come back from our break here, we're going to talk about the incumbent options to back up Wendell Carter and why I don't think Goga Batadze and Mo Wagner get the job done. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at Game Time. A couple weeks ago, I went to, you know, I had the crazy idea. I had my Friday off for, for Memorial Day. I had the crazy idea. Let's go to St. Pete. Go, let's go to the Tampa Bay Rays game. And, you know, it was a game against the Dodgers. We weren't really sure what a good price was. And I told the group that I was going with, like, hey, don't worry about the tickets. I know just where to go to make sure we get the best price. And I know exactly where we're sitting. And that was to the game time app. Buying tickets has never been simpler. I really enjoyed my experience at the game. Getting the tickets was a little bit of a hassle, was a little bit of a problem because of uh, MLB's ballpark app. But game time helped me out, made assured me that, hey, here's the link to your tickets. They're on your phone. They're not, they, they may not be working on MLB's app, but we got you covered. Customer service was fantastic. I could see when I bought my tickets, the view from my seat. Is exactly what it was when we got there. We had a great time. Tampa Bay Rays won as well. Best team in baseball. Check out our friends at Locked On Rays. You can have this experience too. Game time is the best place to get last-minute ticket deals, and it's the fastest-growing ticket app in the country for a reason. You can really buy tickets in a matter of seconds. It's two taps, and you're set. And the tickets are sent directly to your phone, so you never have to dig through your email. And again, they the, the customer service will help you out if you have any questions. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LockedOnNBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LockedOnNBA for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Before we jump back in and talk a little bit about the incumbent options, I- I'm happy to announce that I am joining Subtext. Uh, if you want to get ready for the NBA draft, talk with me directly. Um, about the Orlando Magic. Subtext is uh, uh, the place you got to try. Subtext is essentially uh, is essentially having my phone number and having a direct line to me. I'll send out some link, so send out some some comments and some thoughts as well, as well as let you know when Locked On Magic is available. Plus what we're going to be talking about on the show as well. There's a lot of possibilities with Subtext, especially as we get closer and closer to the season. Go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Magic. That's su- join, join Subtext dot com slash locked on magic to learn more information. There's a small subscription to be part of the service. You do get 14 days free. So maybe, maybe time that up a little bit closer to the draft, closer to the draft. If you want all my draft content, I'm excited to, to start, start subtexting and texting with you directly. So check it out when you get the chance. So the magic have some decent backup center options. Um, when you look at this roster, the Magic do technically have two centers, at least under contract. Mo Wagner has a partially guaranteed deal for next season. It becomes fully guaranteed on June 30th, if I'm not mistaken, as well as a team option on Goga Batadze on June 30th. Uh, that also kicks in on June 30th as well, or they have to make that decision by June 30th. Um, essentially, essentially, what we have here uh, is we will know all this might all this conversation I'm having might be moot by the end of the month. Uh, we will know before free agency whether the Magic are going to chase after a center in free agency, whether that's going to come in a trade. And again, draft night's going to be a big part of that. I have a few trade targets as well uh, for, for draft night. We're going to probably save that for mock, mock draft Monday. Um, but but the Magic do have two center options available to them. And, and I, I, I want to have this conversation because I do think the Magic need an upgrade, but... We have to recognize that these players exist. Mo Wagner is coming off an incredible season for him. 10.5 points per game, 4.5 rebounds per game. He was extremely reliable offensively. Finished the season on such a strong offensive kick. 
And, and there's a lot of reasons to really like Mo Wagner beyond just that he's Franz's brother and makes Franz's life a lot easier as a roommate. Um, he's an irritant, which the Magic do need. That Magic do need a guy that's going to kind of push the needle a little bit on the physicality sometimes and 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 distract other player, distract uh, opponents at times. Uh, there's a there's a lot that the Magic should like about their backup center options. Um, you know, especially with Bo Wagner, because he's been with the team now for a year and a half, and he he for a season and a half, he has done a lot of really good things. But he again. To me, the issue is not that Mo Wagner or Goga Batadze are not good options. Goga Batadze, in 17 games with the Magic, also played really, really well. Um, uh, for Batadze, I don't have his numbers in front of me, but Batadze was really, really solid for the Magic, for the Magic too, uh, and 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 gave the Magic a, a real defensive presence that they were missing. Uh, in the post, and essentially, as the season came to a con- con- conclusion, Jamal Mosley was picking Batadze or Wagner based on what the team needed in that moment or needed for that matchup. They worked really, really well in tandem. Um, sure, you know, one was playing, the other one, one wasn't, but they worked really, really well in tandem. And, and and so I think, I think there is something there. But again, to me, this is all about the Wendell Carter question, uh, and that is that essentially. Wendell Carter's going to miss 15 to 20 games. Are you prepared to start Mo Wagner or Goga Batadze for 15 to 20 games? Can the Magic make that balance work? And again, maybe you differ on this. I'm fine if you do. I like Goga Batadze. I like what he gave this team uh, down the stretch. I like Mo Wagner. I like what he did down the stretch too, too. But I ultimately do question whether those are starter caliber centers. And at the end of the day, the Magic aren't likely to improve so much that they're comfortably in the playoffs. We're going to be talking, again, especially if we're betting on Wendell Carter missing 15 to 20 games a year. Those 15 to 20 games, Magic go seven and eight, or you know, God forbid, Magic go five and ten. Let's just let's just be optimistic. 15 games. In those 15 games, if the Magic go five and ten, that could be the difference between making the playoffs and missing the playoffs. That could be the difference between the play-in and not the play-in. That could be the di- that certainly would be the difference between the play-in and being a six seed. And so to me, this is the ultimate question. I like Mo Wagner. I like Goga Batadze. But Mo Wagner was the worst defensive center in the league last year at the rim. According to data from Second Spectrum, Wagner gave up 75.5% shooting at the rim, which was the worst mark among centers who played at least 50 games this season. So just play, players who play regularly. If the margin for error is going to be this small, the Magic cannot have a guy who's just going to parade guys to the basket, who's not going to be able to challenge guys at the rim or challenge guys in the paint. Mono Carter is a good shot blocker. He's not a, an above-the-rim player. Opponents shot like 53.5% against Wendell Carter. It's, you know, not like an elite number. Like, Bo Bombo was still better than him on, on that. But certainly enough to affect the defense. Um, certainly enough to say, like, okay, Wendell Carter can defend. Mo Wagner really can't. And especially because Paolo Bancaro isn't a rim protector. Mo Wagner starting, again, and I like Mo Wagner. This isn't a knock on him. He's very good at the role that he plays. Starting Mo Wagner for 15 games scares me. It, it, it scares me for what this team needs to become. At the end of the day, what I'd like to see is, you know, if, if the goal is to develop Paolo and, and Franz, you need players that are going to make them better. And Mo Wagner plays into their weaknesses almost. Um, Especially again, if he's going to have to start some time and look, you're going to say, well, depth is depth. Like he's not, you're not, you know, Wendell Carter could end up playing 80 games next year. He could, but you also want depth. (laughs) Um, You also want to be able to to, to cover yourself and to have a center that's also going to protect the rim and do all the same things. And look, you know, the magic might have Jonathan Isaac for, you know, 50, 60 games next year too. That gives you some rim protection. That gives Mo Wagner some cover coming off the bench. So I'm not against bringing Mo Wagner back next year. So then what about Goga Batadze? 
you ready to start Goku Patase for 15 to 20 games? And honestly, this is where I fall is if I had to pick between the two right now, I might take Goga for that reason. Goga Batadze was a great pay, uh, paint defender. Um, I think outside of Jonathan Isaac, he had the second best defensive rating, uh, on-court defensive rating of any player on the team. Um, he's just a really solid defender, but somewhat limited offensively. You know, maybe a full summer with the Magic, maybe, you know, coming back from playing in the World Cup. You know, Movaga will also play in the World Cup this summer. Um, maybe that will help him. Maybe that will help kind of crystallize his talent. Maybe the Magic know how to use him in a way that the Pacers didn't. To me, these are both very good op. These are these are two very good players within their role. You want to cap them at backup center because they have limitations offense. They have limitations in one area or another, uh, and and uh, they have they have limitations in one way or another, uh, or they. You know, essentially, I just don't trust them to start 15 to 20 games, a quarter of the season. Um, if they have to start a quarter of the season, which again, all the numbers, all the history tells us is something you have to be prepared for, then I am concerned. Unfortunately for the Orlando Magic, this draft class, as well as this free agent class, isn't really full of backup center, backup level centers or the kind of centers that I'm looking for. I want to go over some of the options and some of the questions about them coming up in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at Prize Picks. The NBA Finals still going on, and every day heading into the end of the NBA Finals, one Prize Picks user will win a chance at becoming a millionaire. One entry place after 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time will be randomly selected each day. And whoever plays that entry will be given a six-pick flex pick with the following payouts. $1 million if you get them all correct. $80,000 for five correct picks. $16,000 for four correct picks. Full details can be found at pricepicks.com. million You must opt in at this link to be eligible for the million-dollar entry. Once you opt in, all you have to do is play the game like normal, and you could be the lucky winner. Prize picks is so easy to play. It's daily fantasy done right. There's no complicated salary caps, no complicated scoring system, and you're not going up against all the sharks who put multiple entries in these pools to make you just think that, oh, I'm just trying to win back my money. I know that's how I felt playing some of these daily fantasy games. When I play prize picks, I know it's just me against the numbers. And I can pick from any sport, NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, college basketball when it's going, WNBA, NASCAR, and so much more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's really that easy. They offer safe and fast withdrawals. They're currently operational in more than 30 states, including here in Florida, as well as Canada. Check them out today. Download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match of up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, PrizePix will give you $100. If you deposit $50, price picks will give you $50. It's really that easy, just like playing the game. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on and sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. So, to me, again, this backup center question is it's, I don't want to call it a luxury because I do think it's important. There are bigger needs still on this roster, and, and there are. There are things that this team needs to do to continue to put themselves in a position to win. And, and again, you know, just kind of like the Wendell Carter question in general. And again, maybe I'm the only one asking these questions. It's, it's a question I'm asking, but I'm willing to let C play out and answer. Maybe this is a, a concern. Maybe this isn't the like top line concern for the Magic. Maybe the top line concern is still to bring in talent, like we talked about yesterday. Maybe the top line concern is to bring in shooting. Uh, and, and they understand you're not going to fix every problem with this roster in one offseason. That's okay. This, though, isn't, as far as positional needs, like, I'm not worried about Gary Harris starting at the two. I, I know there's a lot of people who want to make these gigantic trades. Gary Harris starting at the two, I'm fine with that. You know, I like Jalen Suggs. I want to see if Jalen Suggs can push him for it, but I'm fine with that. Um. To me, this is the biggest positional need. And unfortunately, just based on pure positional need, this is not a draft. This is not a offseason where backup centers are bountiful and options are many. 
And the Magic are one of the few teams with salary cap space this offseason. This is an area where they could spend a little bit of money. Personally, if it's me, I want a veteran backup center. I just want the, the, the consistency, the understanding of like, I'm going to take this role. You know, someone that, you know, could come in, start for a little bit, and then go back to the bench and, and know what they're doing and, and not really change anything. Um, I'm looking for consistency here. Um, and so this isn't a, a, a draft class with a ton of centers. Yeah, Victor Wembenyama is the number one pick. He's going to be a center. Jairus Walker could probably play some center, although he's very undersized. I wouldn't want him as a, as a starter. Um, Taylor Hendricks, not really big enough to be a center. Really the only center option that the Magic should be looking at in this draft class is Derek Lively the second. Lively was one of the top high school prospects entering the season that just had a really bad year at Duke. Um, some of it is sort of like Paolo Bancaro. Um, Duke had to try and win games, and so they used him very differently. He averaged only 5.2 points per game as well as 5.4 rebounds per game in 20.6 minutes per game. Largely played next to Kyle Filipowski, who is not an NBA player, but a very good college player. Um, uh, not likely an NBA player. I don't want to say he's not an NBA player, but very good college player. And, and Lively really kind of struggled to find his fit. Um, however, everyone knows there's a ton of talent there. He's like 7'1", 7'2". He's a big dude. Um, he is really skilled and really athletic. Just wasn't able to show that at Duke. And now he's starting to pick up some some buzz on the workout circuit because he's displaying a three-point shot that he wasn't able to show in, in college at Duke. Um, he's an interesting option just from a talent perspective. It, definitely a guy you know that uh, some team is going to roll the dice on and, and see what they can get out of him. Uh, you know, Certainly could be a, a steal in, in the late lottery. It would not surprise me if the Magic do look at him very closely for that 11th pick. But again... The thing I'm looking for from this position is consistency. And so I, I do think the veteran option is the way to go. And probably the best kind of backup level center that makes sense for this Magic team is Nas Reed and the Minnesota Timberwolves. Nas Reed had a great year last year, averaged 11 and a half points per game, 4.9 rebounds per game. He's been a fairly consistent 34 to 35% three-point shooter for most of his career. He shot 34.6% on 3.2 attempts per game last year. He's just he's just a he's just a grinder. Um, sets really good screens, block shots. You know he's done really really well to kind of bring his athleticism out in the NBA. He's just a grinder. Just does all the dirty work. A little bit undersized, but could easily start at center. You know you could argue Minnesota's season turned on two things: Nasri getting hurt late in the season. I believe he did have surgery, so he's you know still kind of out right now. Um, Nasri getting hurt late in the season. And Jane McDaniel's punching the wall and breaking his hand. Um, those two things kept Minnesota, you know, from really being competitive in their series against the Nuggets, as well as from probably beating the Lakers in that first play-in game. Uh, this this is a guy that just works really hard, and he's probably due. You know, he's been playing on like a second-round pick salary. He is due to make a salary up near fifteen million dollars per year. I, I think he will get somewhere between twelve and fifteen million dollars a year. And again. The Magic have some money to spend. They could easily do a three for 50. They could easily do, you know, e even a two for 30 if they wanted to protect themselves a little bit. Um, this is a guy that I think is going to have a very robust market. It's a guy that Minnesota wants to keep around, even though they're pretty locked in at center with Rudy Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns as their two big men. He's a guy that can play some four, can obviously come out and, and shoot the three a little bit. Uh, this is this is a guy that has the versatility. You can play him alongside Wendell Carter if you wanted to in some lineups. Does the Magic want to go really, really big? Do like a a, Car a Carter, Reed, pa Paolo, Franz, Markel, or shoot, go Isaac, Franz. Like, let's play Franz at the point. Why not? Um, you could do big lineups and have him in there, and he could play alongside other big men. Um, I really like Nas Reed. I, I do wonder if if some of his reputation is isn't real the wolves have you know he project he is a, a positive defensive player positive defensive plus minus in each of the last two years had more had more than one and a half defensive win shares in each of the last two years timberwolves had a 113.3 defensive rating with him on the floor slightly worse than their team average of 113.1 so you know you have you have a lot of indicators that yes the defense is real that it exists outside of that context um, but you have some indicators that say, like, you know, maybe he's not as impactful as as he looks with some of the plays that he's able to make. 
Um, he's going to get more than $10 million. I have him in the 12 to $15 million range as, as a potential guy to chase. A lot of Magic fan, you know, the options after him get really, really slim, though. Uh, and, and that's that's kind of the problem. Um, I have Dwight Powell on my list. He's a star, He was a starting center for Dallas at various points. He's been kind of in and out of lineups with injuries. Good body, kind of good range, can block some shots. Not going to give you a ton offensively, but can step out, hit hit jumpers. Not like the the kind of like sexy pick um, uh, uh, as far as backup centers go. But you know what you're getting with him. He plays hard. He defend. He defends well. Not going to get in the way. Not going to give you a lot offensively. The other guy to look out for as well as Mason Plumley of uh, I had him, uh, of the LA Clippers. Um, Plumley. Plumley again, you know he's very limited offensively, not a great free throw shooter, but he's going to be in the right spots defensively. He's going to block a few shots. He's going to finish with force above the rim. Um, you know, he's a guy that struggled a little bit with when he got traded to the Clippers. Um, really slots in as a back as a backup center and spot starter. Like Mason Plum, like would not surprise me if Mason Plumley's the guy that they target. Out of all these guys, Nas Reed is the expensive option and, and the risk, not the riskier option, but the you know, you're giving up some financial flexibility because you are putting in a big investment. Mason Plumley, you could easily get for two for probably two for 20, somewhere in the 20 to 20, $25 million total range uh, over two years. If that's where you wanted to go, you know, you could probably get hit. You know, you're looking at a contract between probably 10 and $12 million, maybe a little bit less uh, on Mason Plumley because he's such a limited player, but he's very good at the things he's very good at. Um, And so, uh, again, you're looking at a backup center. You don't need a ton. And, and again, like I'm saying, you just need him to start. You just need him to be able to start 15 to 20 games. And, and that's what Mason Plumley would be able to do. Obviously, the big option a lot of Magic fans have been talking themselves into is um, is Nikola Vucevic. I've seen a lot of Magic chatter. Look, we published something on Online Magic Daily asking, like, would the Magic chase after Nikola Vucevic as a backup center? Um, it does sound like Vooch is going to re-sign with the Bulls, that the Bulls are eager to re- to get a deal done with him before the June 30th deadline. Um, he's looking to get he's looking to get starter money. He's looking to start. This is probably his last big contract. So I, I don't think a reunion with Nikola Vucevic uh is in the cards and in the running for 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 these guys. So um I do think that 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 is. As, as nice as it would be, because I'm a big Vooch guy, y'all, y'all know, y'all know, I, I, I support and respect Vooch a ton, um, except for his take about the Last Jedi. Um, I don't think that's in the offing. I don't think that's what he wants in his career right now, and that, I don't think that's where the Magic are going either. So, like I said, the options aren't great. <laughs> it's a very shallow pool here. I mean, you could be talking about Thomas Bryan, who's been dealing with a lot of injuries. He's not even playing for the Nuggets right now in the in the finals after the after the Nuggets, you know spent some money and, and spent some capital to trade Bones Island to, to try and get to, to get Thomas Bryant at the trade deadline. Um, he's an interesting option, but the injuries make me shy away from him. Um, and so, you know, I honestly would put the odds at fairly even money um, that the Magic do end up uh, end up going with keeping the incumbents and, and trying Goga Batadze and, and Mo Wagner and, and putting their resources elsewhere. Um, there are a few trade options that I would look at. Um, I've pitched around and, and, and the lot, you know, when we do the lockdown mock draft, I will talk a little bit more about that, about some of the things that I did or did not do in the lockdown mock draft. I didn't talk to Washington about Daniel Gafford. So there might be something there. Um, you know, there's, there's certainly some other backup bigs around the league as well that 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 I think the magic might be able to, to get a trade in if they're willing to put in some second round capital um as well as potentially a, a couple players that that really are out of the rotation as they try to consolidate a little bit. Um again, like I said, backup center to me is the biggest positional need. Um it is not ur- it's not urgent. You could probably get away with it, but you're risking, you know, to me all the players are saying we want to be in the playoffs next year. The magic keeps saying we need to level up. This is an area where I think the Magic need to kind of shore themselves up to make sure that they take uh, those important next steps. But that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at R underscore OMD. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts. Switch your tune in to Himalaya, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all of them. Listen on the podcast to your podcast enabled listening device. For latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out OrlandoMagicDaily.com. You can follow us on Twitter at OMagicDaily. 
We appreciate you, all of you who listen to the podcast every day. If you're not listening to us every day for my everyday crew, you know, that's cool. I, I get it. The daily podcasts are hard. I, I, I have a podcast playlist. That's a couple hundred long. I don't get to everything that I want to listen to either, but if you are part of our everyday crew on tomorrow's episode of locked on magic, we're going to kind of start wrapping up. We're going to kind of clean up and, and wrap up uh, player evaluations. Um, talk about some players that we haven't talked about in their season kind of put the bow on that. Um, I, I'm planning Jeff Weltman and Jamal Mosley evaluations. Um, we've talked a little bit about Jamal already, um, about Coach Mose uh, already, but planning that for later in the week, if not early next week, um, as we prepare for the NBA draft and, and, and really turn the page over to next season. But that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic for Orlando Magic Daily and Locked on Magic. This has been Philip Rossman-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked on Magic.